Right now at 6, a Carthage man pleads guilty to a fatal DWI crash in Joplin in 2022. And we're starting at the morning in the 50s, but warming up to the upper 70s. I'll have those details coming up. Plus, voters in Crawford County get a look at the candidates running for sheriff. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 6 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. And thank you for joining us today on October 23rd, Wednesday. I can't believe we're just like rolling through October. Uh, we really are. I feel like it just started it because it doesn't I feel, feel like, like the it. year just started. Oh, yeah, but I've well, been here know, for a year. Lindsay. I know we're going like on that. what 11 months just to close. Yeah, wow. Unbelievable. I hope everyone loves me now, <laughs> 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 uh, but today is a great day. Yeah. Temperatures are in the 50s to start, so I mean, not too cool, but it's all right. Sure. Uh, clear skies. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. We've got 59 degrees out in Joplin, 51 in Pittsburgh, so a little bit cooler on Pittsburgh. Winds have shifted out of the uh, south now, out of the north, out in Pittsburgh, but Joplin still in the middle of that wind shift line, so temperatures are a smidge warmer, but clear skies. Now, boundary is moving through, so temperatures are going to continue to drop as we head into the day. Yesterday, we got up to the upper 80s, actually breaking a few records, but today we're only getting up to about 79 to just about 80 degrees in Joplin. Now, the southern counties are going to be a smidge warmer in the low 80s, but everybody is going to be mostly clear skies, no clouds, no rain, at least not today. But we do have rain chances in the forecast, and it was my favorite thing to say, especially this time of year, we haven't gotten a lot of rain, but rain starting to push in late Thursday evening and continuing until the overnight hours on Friday, but clearing out before you have to start your day on Friday. But I'll have those details coming up. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Election day is in just under two weeks away, but voters in Missouri are already heading to the polls. Now, early voters gathered at the Jasper County Courthouse to take advantage of the chance to vote early. And just like Election Day voting, early voters will need to bring a form of ID. Acceptable forms of ID include a Missouri driver or non-driver's license, military ID, or a U.S. passport. Uh, is going to be the biggest election uh, and there are going to be lines. We have a couple polling locations that are notoriously for having long lines for people who want to vote uh, on election day. Uh, and what this does is this prevents you from having to stand in those uh, long lines. Now the county clerk reminds the public that early voting is just as secure as election day voting. Early in person voting is well underway in Kansas. In some places, it began Saturday. The voters cast ballots at the Bicknell Center in Pittsburgh yesterday, where a poll worker says turnout was well ahead what they typically see for early voting. Now, early polling locations will change from day to day in various Kansas counties. When you head to the polls this November, you'll see a lot of names on your ballot, but we want to help you learn more about the candidates you'll be voting for. This time, those running for Crawford County Sheriff. Now, Danny Smith is running for re-election after being sworn into the position in April 2019. Smith is being opposed by Billy Tomasi, who has more than 30 years of law enforcement experience, most recently as a deputy in Crawford County, serving as a school resource officer. Now, both candidates say one thing they hope to address is the area struggles with drugs. As, as deputies are doing traffic enforcement or working investigations, um, they're going to come across these uh, these cases and they're going to make their arrests and try to get those uh, drugs off our streets. We still have a homeless population uh, has to do with the drugs and has to do with mental health. And we got to get out there and get them both help for the addiction and the mental health. And you got to start. You can't just wait for them to come to you. The voters will cast their ballots for Crawford County Sheriff November 5th. You can hear more from both candidates on our website, koamnewsnow.com. And to find voting information for your area, just scan this QR code. It'll take you to election resources on our website. Of course, that's koamnewsnow.com. And you'll be able to find all sorts of election info, including polling places and schedules. And you can even check to see if you're registered to vote. 
The Carthage man pleads guilty for his role in a fatal DWI crash that happened more than two years ago. Joseph Hill was 19 years old at the time of the crash in July 2022. Now, Joplin police say he was driving under the influence when he overturned near Grand Falls in Joplin. The crash killed 19 year old Keaton Reed and a third person in the vehicle was taken to the hospital. The Joplin Police Department arrested Hill after determining he was intoxicated while driving. The prosecutors originally charged Hill with the DWI death of another assault second degree and driving while revoked or suspended. Now, as part of the plea deal, the second and third charges were dismissed. Hill's sentencing is scheduled for January. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News. Denny's is closing 150 restaurants and no longer staying open 24 hours in some locations. Plus, the presidential candidates are back in the background battleground states using slightly different strategies. And Lindsay Gaffney returns with another look at your Wednesday forecast. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Cato, Kansas for this weekend's Cato Days. Well, topping Nation Watch this morning. Your opportunities to get a Grand Slam at 3 in the morning are about to shrink dramatically. Now, Denny's announced Tuesday it's closing 150 restaurants in the next year or so. 50 of them will shutter by the end of this year, with another 100 diners set to go dark in 2025. Now That will leave close to 1,400 locations still open. But corporate Denny's is taking a lighter hand on requiring franchisees to stay open 24 hours a day. That means your local Denny's may start closing around the same time as other restaurants. About 25% of all Denny's never went back to 24 7 operating hours after the pandemic. Well, Target is slashing prices on thousands of items ahead of the holiday shopping season. The retailer will cut prices on more than 2,000 home goods, beauty products, toys, and food and beverage items. Some prices have already dropped and the discounting will continue through December. This is the second time this year that Target has cut prices in an attempt to lure in inflation weary shoppers. In May, Target planned to slash prices on 5,000 items, but surpassed that number, cutting prices on 8,000 items. The discounts have helped boost customer spending after a string of dreadful quarters for the company. General Motors is on track for record earnings in 2024. The automaker reported stronger than expected third quarter earnings with $3.4 billion in profit. Now revenue rose more than 10% to nearly $49 billion. And that's way more than forecasts projected considering the costly United Auto Workers Union strike last year. Now GM raised its earnings outlook for the rest of the year. Now we are now less than two weeks out from Election Day with millions of early voter votes cast. The candidates are back in the backgrounds today and their strategies like Tuesday slightly different. Now, former President Donald Trump met with Latina voters in Florida before an event in Battleground, North Carolina. Vice President Kamala Harris sat down for a network news interview, though her running mate and former president Barack Obama took her message to the Midwest. Jared Hill has more on the state of the race from New York. We're going to win North Carolina. Former President Donald Trump was back in the Tar Heel State Tuesday for the second day in a row, slamming Vice President Kamala Harris. She's totally unfit for office. And the retired generals who served in his administration. What a stupid group of people they were. Mattis, Millie. An article published by The Atlantic yesterday claimed that during a private conversation while in office, Trump said, quote, I need the kind of generals Hitler had. 
people who were totally loyal to him, which the Trump campaign has denied. As a 24-year veteran of our military, that makes me sick as hell. Harris's running mate, Tim Walls, reacted to the alleged Hitler comment while stumping in Wisconsin yesterday. Earlier, former President Barack Obama joined him on the trail before Obama rallied solo in Detroit, introduced by rapper Eminem. What I cannot understand is why anybody would think that Donald Trump will shake things up in a way that is good for you. Harris traded the campaign stage for sit-down interviews, telling NBC News she won't compromise on abortion rights. I don't think we should be making concessions when we're talking about a fundamental freedom to make decisions about your own body. Harris also said she and her team are ready should Trump prematurely declare victory on election night. Jared Hill, CBS News. A former President Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, was asked about what a Trump Vance administration would do to support women, and he responded that they would make choosing life more affordable. Today, Trump stumps in Battleground, Georgia, while Vice President Harris will head to Pennsylvania for a televised town hall. And that's a look at some of today's top national stories. Here's Lindsay with a look at your forecast. We're starting off the morning again, all day sunny skies. But we're starting off the morning in the upper 50s to mid 50s across the region. The northern counties are going to be a few degrees cooler because those winds have shifted out of the north up in the northern counties. Southern counties a few degrees warmer into the low 80s for our highs, but the northern counties into the upper 70s. So we've got this wider range because that wind shift line is still currently moving through. But overall, it's going to be a nice, pretty warm day today. Tomorrow, warming up even more, plus some rain chances in the forecast. Well, there's a new boxing program in Kansas City, Missouri, aimed at combating gun violence. But this initiative is a bit different than other boxing programs you might be familiar with. And one of the tools they use in training is a virtual reality headset. Chandler Watkins reports. Hope, a new future, dreams coming true. This alternative program got its start with boxing to combat gun violence. Stats from Kansas City Police show that over 30% of both victims and suspects in homicides in the city are 24 years old or younger. But you know, as we did that the first meet, we found out there was a lot of issues that we left on the table. And one was no hope. A lot of young men had fears, so we brought in the virtual reality machine. Whoa, law. When asked if he tried the virtual reality. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. 15 year old Devon Doss's face lights up. First time, it was like, whoa. I basically faced my fear. Everybody said, you gotta face your fears. Eventually, you gotta overcome them. That's what I did in virtual reality. <clears throat> <laughs> They're able to do hundreds of different simulations. Today, they showed us boxing. 24-year-old Des Griswold has been boxing for years before getting involved in this program. As one of the oldest, he's working to set an example. It's great. Keeps them off the streets, give them something to do. To have this community is like one of the best things. It's a big blessing. Today, we are working together. As they gathered in the ring, Caldwell says they may not have all the answers, but it's about working together to do something. Now let's head over to Lindsay with a quick look at the forecast. High temperatures today reaching upper 70s to low to mid 80s. Further south you go, the warmer it's going to be 85 in Grove, 85 in Jay, 79 out in Joplin, 77 in Pittsburgh. 76 in Fort Scott, Nevada and Stockton, so much cooler in the northern counties. It's a fantastic day overall, sunny skies all day long. Well, taking a look downtown Pittsburgh, mostly clear morning. So far today it's looking good. Temperatures are in the 50s, so we're starting off a little bit cooler, but Yesterday, our highs got up to 87 degrees, which beat up the record that was set back in 1947. And even our lows were about 10, 15, 20 degrees above average. So we've been warmer even throughout the whole fall season as a whole. We've been above average. We did have a wind shift line that came through this morning is now started to shift out to the southern counties. So temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer out there, but it does cool us off a bit, at least for the next day or so. 
Temperatures starting off today in the mid 50s, mid to upper 50s, about 57 degrees. And we've got that north northeasterly breeze. And then as we head into the afternoon, temperatures only reaching upper 70s to low 80s. So that's a little bit of a drop from yesterday. We're not reaching any records today, but we're getting close. We're still well above average for this time of year. Now temperatures across the region because we talked about that wind shift line has started to shift south, but not really in time to keep those southern counties cool. So 85 still in Grove and J81 in Welsh, 79 in Oswego, 79 in Parsons, Neodice, Joplin, Carthage, Monette. And then as we head into the northern county, 76 in Stockton, Nevada, Fort Scott, 77 in Iola, Chanute, and Yates Center. So a little bit cooler up there. But again, that's still above average for this time of year. Average, we're looking at upper 60s. We've been above average. We're going to stay above average at least for the next couple of weeks. Really not cooling down until December. But that's okay because at least we're having all these clear skies, really great days, temperatures in the mid-70s. So we're dropping down to about 76 by 6 p.m. and into the low 60s by midnight, only getting down to the upper 50s again tonight. Plus, winds start to pick up later on this evening as well. 10 p.m. on Wednesday, winds gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour, but they pick up and gust even stronger than that as we head into it Thursday morning. By 9.30, winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour, but even gusting up to 40 miles per hour by the evening time. Now, this is going to be right ahead of another cold front that's moving through Thursday night around 9, 9.30 p.m. So winds gusting above 40 miles per hour just ahead of that line. They die down as that line pushes in and then we've got maybe some shower chances along that boundary. Throughout the day today, sunny skies, winds start to shift again out of the east and further into the south. So starting off Thursday morning, winds are out of the east. We've got a few clouds pushing in, a few shower chances, but likely those showers are not going to reach the surface, at least not in the morning hours. But that second chance as the winds shift out of the south, there comes that boundary moving in. This is going to be after about 9 p.m. on Thursday. You can see those shower chances mostly north and east of Kansas City is getting the stronger showers and thunderstorm chances. But again, we still might see a couple of isolated showers as that boundary pushes in. Definitely some clouds and this is going to be late Thursday night into early uh, Friday morning. Temperatures drop after that back into the 70s throughout the whole weekend. Sunny skies looking pretty good, but we do warm up by next week. And then just ahead of Halloween, we've got some more rain chances and temperatures drop just ahead of the Halloween night. So temperatures going to be pretty cool for Halloween night, plus a little cloudy. That's a look at your forecast. We'll go over to Elise with Health Watch. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, researchers say they're learning more about why COVID is so infectious. A study by Kobe University found that coronavirus has an enzyme that counteracts our body's innate immune system. And knowing about this enzyme could help researchers develop more effective treatments for COVID in the future. Well, nearly half of all Americans have hypertension, also known as high blood pressure. A national survey from the CDC found 47% of adults have the treatable condition, which increases the risk of heart attack and stroke, and 70% of adults over age 60 have it. Now, the study also found that only one in five hypertension patients had their blood pressure under control. Well, doctors say scurvy may make a resurgence due to the cost of living crisis and the rise of weight loss surgery. The medical journal BMJ case report says a middle aged man got scurvy after neglecting to eat fruits and vegetables due to financial problems. Now, he also said he sometimes skipped meals altogether after his bariatric weight loss surgery. Now, primarily caused by a lack of vitamin C, scurvy is treatable and is most commonly associated with sailors from the Renaissance era. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. We'll be right back. Right now at 630, a sign company in southeast Kansas helps shine a light on some area businesses. Temperatures outside today starting off in the 50s, warming up to the upper 70s. A great looking day. Plus, some students in McDonald County received training for handling school bus emergencies. The four states most watched news starts now. 
Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 628. I'm Elise Snowy and I'm Lindsay Gaffney. Yes, and thank you for joining us this morning. It's going to be another great day. I know it's not, you know, ideal fall temperatures, but it's still pretty nice and I think we'll be missing it mm -hmm. once it gets cold. So. I enjoyed the like temperatures that were in the 60s sure. and like sunny. That was fantastic. Yes, beautiful. But today it's not so bad. Oh. Upper 70s, sunny skies. We'll go ahead and take a look outside. Temperatures starting off in the mid to upper 50s, but a little cooler out in Pittsburgh as a wind shift line does make its way through. Temperatures in Joplin 59 degrees, Pittsburgh 49 degrees. So there's a 10 degree difference out between Joplin and Pittsburgh this morning. And that is because wind shift line is pushing in now starting to make its way through Joplin's so why winds are calm along that boundary. It is a dry boundary, so we're not seeing any clouds or anything, but it's going to be sunny all day long. Temperatures today only reaching upper 70s, possibly reaching about 80 degrees out in Joplin, but the southern counties a little bit warmer in the low 80s and the northern counties a little bit more cooler in the mid to upper 70s. And that's just due to the boundary moving through and the timing of it all. But we're mostly clear, not expecting any rain chances, at least not today, but we are expecting some rain chances to kick off tomorrow evening, likely after about 9 p.m. And it's only going to be isolated shower chances, maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two, but not much going on outside of that. But we'll talk about the isolated storm chances coming up. Well, some rain would be great. Thanks, Lindsay. The McDonald County, Missouri School District rolled into National School Bus Safety Week with a unique and hands on training exercise. Now, the new program, Bus Helpers, empowers selected students to assist bus drivers in the case of an emergency. With parental permission and approval from school personnel, these students received training on critical emergency procedures, including how to stop the bus, use the radio and operate the safety equipment on board. Students are selected by the driver himself uh, as responsible students that are willing to um, help with that in case of emergency. So yes, they're hand selected by the drivers. The training is part of the district's ongoing efforts to create a safer environment for all students during transportation. The Miners Hall Museum in Franklin, Kansas draws thousands of visitors every year with its showcase of Southeast Kansas mining history, but a federal program will allow the museum to improve its preservation efforts. Now CAPS, the Collection Assessment for Preservation, is a federal assessment program designed to work with and evaluate museum's preservation efforts. Museum personnel say they welcomed the assistance. How do we take care of it? Is it okay to leave it in that mat? Is there something we need to do better? And uh, these people have a lot of experience in that, and we're going to count in them to point us in the right direction. <laughs> Only 71 sites were chosen across the country to receive CAPS assistance. Well, Pittsburgh City Commissioners yesterday afternoon toured a downtown property that is in the process of getting quite a facelift. Now, Lorenz Hall's development recently purchased the old Audacious Boutique at second and Broadway. Now crews are currently working to separate the first floor into four units accessible through a courtyard and then add luxury housing on the second floor. Uh, these buildings are really difficult and um, costly to rehabilitate and so it is definitely a passion uh, and really it's great to have collaborators like the Historic Society and other um, entities that can help make these projects possible from a funding standpoint. Loren says her development group is partnering with the city for funding reimbursement for a portion of the project. And she says they originally planned to pursue a grant alongside the city, but is no longer doing so. Well, if you drive through Pittsburgh or Joplin, you'll likely find selected businesses with neon lights. A member of Sign Brothers in Pittsburgh is the only employee who produces these neon lights for the store. Now, he says it's a family trade he picked up from his late father. There's so many other nice ones that I really enjoy doing, like uh, House of Speed, uh, Parrot Head, Liquor Store, um, audacious, but they've unfortunately closed now. Um. 
Now he goes on to say the process could take hours or even days to complete. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. Boeing union members vote on a new contract today that could end their strike of 33,000 workers. And we have a nice and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Lindsay Gaffney and the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOA Morning News. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Cato, Kansas for this weekend's Cato Days. In Consumer Watch this morning, despite a lot of uncertainty looming over the oil markets, most U.S. drivers are seeing relief at the gas pumps right now. So what's pushing gas prices lower? Karen Kaifa has the details from Washington. Gas prices have ticked lower in most places in recent weeks, even in an environment with a lot of uncertainty. We should see a slight decrease in gasoline prices going forward in the next month or two. And then a, a period of a pretty relatively stable gas prices as things project into the springtime. AAA's price tracker said that as of Tuesday, the nationwide average for a gallon of regular gasoline is $3.16, down four cents from one month ago. And Gas Buddy said Monday its tracker saw the median U.S. gas price slip below the $3 per gallon mark for the first time since early 2024. Ezra Peterson, senior director at AutoAppWay.com, says it's the season for lower gas prices as demand decreases from the summer months and as pumps in some parts of the country switch over to a winter blend that makes it easier to start a car in cold weather. What that does is because you're using less crude oil in the refining process, the gasoline price itself is actually less sensitive to that crude oil to that crude oil wholesale price. Peterson says U.S. gasoline prices have become less dependent upon swings in the global oil markets in recent years as the nation's refining capacity has expanded and reserves have been stable. Crude oil prices close to $70 per barrel recently have also helped to keep those prices at the pump in check. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. Well, the IRS has announced its new inflation adjusted tax brackets for 2025. The annual income thresholds will increase 2.8% over this year's thresholds, the smallest jump in several years. Economists say the increases are likely to get smaller as inflation continues to cool. Well, the CDC says it's investigating an E. coli outbreak that has sickened nearly 50 people in 10 states. So far, 10 people have been hospitalized and one person died. The agency says most of those impacted reported eating a McDonald's quarter pounder before they got sick. The CDC is now trying to determine which ingredient could possibly be the cause of the outbreak. And air travelers who try to board before their group number is called may want to think twice. American Airlines says it's piloting technology that would make an audible sound and display a message to gate agents when a person tries to board before their assigned group is called. Now that passenger would then be instructed to wait their turn. What's well, decision day for tens of thousands of Boeing employees who are on strike? Union and company leaders are offering a newly revised contract. Today, union members get to decide on whether to ratify the deal. Amy Kiley reports the vote will determine if the walkout continues. It's so important that Boeing get everybody back to work. Boeing union members vote on a new contract today that could end their strike. The walkout involves about 33,000 workers and has lasted more than a month. It's paralyzing Boeing's airplane manufacturing. I want our company to solidify this thing and let us come back to work. Some employees seem on board with the new deal. It involves a 35% wage increase over four years, the reinstatement of an incentive program, a ratification bonus, and a one-time 401k boost. 
It's not good enough, and it's not a step in the right direction. Other employees sound unimpressed. Some want a return of Boeing pensions. The company says that is not going to happen. One time lump sum into a 401k is not a pension. A $7,000 signing bonus is not a pension. The strike's costing Boeing an estimated billion dollars a month, and it's costing the country, too. The company contributes about $79 billion to the U.S. economy annually. It's the nation's largest exporter and a U.S. military supplier. The U.S. Defense Department is at least 50 percent of what Boeing does, and that is incredibly important to keep just for our safety in the U.S. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. And that's it for Consumer Watch. Here's Lindsay with another look at your forecast. Well, we can see winds starting to shift out of the north, especially in those northern counties. Another calm, so we're not getting a big breeze, but we are getting those cooler temperatures as we head into the day. Starting off 8 a.m., temperatures in the low to upper low 60s to upper 50s. By 9 a.m., a couple of clouds maybe, but overall warming up nicely. Mid 70s by a little bit before noon, only getting up to the upper 70s. 79 for a high out in Joplin, but the further south you go, warmer you, you're going to be upper uh, 70s to low 80s. Highest temperature going to be about 85 degrees. Now, northern counties getting up to uh, just mid to upper 70s. So overall, not so bad. Now, winds do start to pick up late tonight, gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. And then as we head into tomorrow, winds pick up even more uh, strong gusts up to 45 miles per hour, especially by the evening time, just ahead of another boundary that's moving in after 9 p.m. tomorrow. Temperatures are reaching upper 80, so it's going to be a hot one tomorrow. But then that boundary moving in drops those temperatures again for the weekend, plus Maybe a few showers start to spark up along the boundary as well. So overall, it's going to be a good looking day and heading into the weekend. Also fantastic. Now it's almost time to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. They're up after the break, but first let's see what's happening on CBS mornings. Coming up on CBS mornings, ready or not, artificial intelligence is now part of our lives and that comes with some real potential dangers, especially for our children. We're going to talk to a mom who experienced a horrible family tragedy that she blames on this new technology. Plus, before you know it, tax season is going to be here. There are some changes to the tax code that could affect your refund. Jill Schlesinger is going to break it down, what you need to know when you file. And we have a very special talk of the table this morning. Entertainment Tonight co-host Nichelle Turner came all the way from L.A. just for little old us. We appreciate that. We'll see you at 7. Well, it's time to celebrate some Wednesday birthdays and anniversaries starting in Baxter Springs with Braxton Burton celebrating birthday number three. Happy birthday. And we've got Jethro Cook celebrating his sixth birthday out in Lamar. Happy birthday, Jethro. And over in Columbus, happy seventh birthday to Lenny Kellogg. Hayden Thomas Carriger celebrating birthday number 12 out in Dare, Oklahoma. Message here says we love you from Mimi, Raya, Roro, Papa, many aunts and uncles and cousins. And over in Dependence, Kansas, a happy 18th birthday to Dylan Cooley. It says here happy birthday from Grandma and Pa. And celebrating birthday number 92, Merrill Hodgen from Iola, Kansas. Happy birthday from Vance, Judy, and all the family. We love you. And celebrating another year wiser, happy birthday to Amy Wade in Pittsburgh. We've got an anniversary. Brett and Amy Strickland celebrating their 20th anniversary, two decades. That's amazing. Your family is very proud of you and love you very much. And one of our own is celebrating a birthday today. Daniel Rennie, one of our technical media operators, is celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday, Daniel. And we've got a few more birthdays. Larry Hyatt out in Columbus, Kansas. The message says, happy birthday to our Columbus News Report editor. And over in Pittsburgh, happy birthday to Jeff Scott. And Pat Bennett is also celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday, Pat. And over in Carthage, happy birthday to Tracy Asbell.
finally, Jackson Lynn Toomey celebrating 11th birthday. That is my favorite number out in Joplin, Missouri. Happy birthday message says much love from Grammy and Poppy. You're the greatest. Well, certainly a wonderful list of birthdays and anniversaries there. And if you would like to celebrate with us, you can do so by submitting those birthdays and anniversaries to birthdays at KOMnewsnow.com. Be sure to include those photos and messages and to, of course, meet the deadline that you see there at the bottom of your screen. Now let's take it on over to Lindsay for another look at the forecast. Well, today looking pretty good. We've got a nice little sunrise going out there downtown Pittsburgh, mostly sunny skies and temperatures are a little bit cooler out in Pittsburgh in the low 50s. Now yesterday we actually beat out a record that was set back in 1947 at a high of 87 degrees. Now we are well above average for this time of year. Temperatures for uh, this time should be about upper 60s and our lows should be mid 40s. But we're in the upper 80s and lows in the mid 60s, so we're nearly 20 degrees where we should be. Now, luckily, wind shift line came in this morning and is still continuing to move in. Now, no clouds or rain along that boundary, but we do have cooler temperatures as we head into our Wednesday. Starting off in the upper 50s, about 57 degrees, we've got that north northeasterly breeze and again, sunny skies all day long. Temperatures really only reaching upper 70s in most of our northern and central counties and low 80s in our southern counties, only reaching about 85 degrees as our high, but those winds are still out of the north northeast. Now, that's where I'm uh, we see that boundary kind of moving in a little bit later in the southern counties, so temperatures aren't cooling down as much down there. 85 in Grove and J, 84 in Venita and Nawada, but about 79 Monette, Carthage, Joplin, Oswego, Parsons, and 76 up in Stockton, Nevada, Fort Scott, so a little bit cooler up there. Now temperatures warm right back up tomorrow, but until then it's going to be a great looking evening. Mid 70s by 6 p.m., so our high again mid to upper 70s, low 80s, and then dropping down to low 60s by midnight, really only reaching as low as upper 50s for our low tomorrow. And winds start to pick up later on this evening around 10 p.m. gusting 20, 25 miles per hour. So a little bit stronger wind gusts, but they pick up even more as we head into Thursday morning. By 930, winds are going to start to gust up to 30 miles per hour, but they strengthen even more above 40 miles per hour by later on in the evening. So it's about 8 p.m. right ahead of the boundary. You can barely see where the winds die down right along that boundary as winds start to shift out of the north. There they go. That's our wind shift line up north and it starts to move into our area by about 9 to 10 p.m. So we've got mostly sunny skies today and as we head into tomorrow morning, some clouds start to push up, but Really, we're not going to see any of those showers not reaching the surface, but a few clouds in the morning hours through the early afternoon getting up to upper 80s tomorrow. So we're warming up pretty quickly. And then here comes that wind shift line again. This is after about 9 p.m. We're going to start to see it push into our area. The main threat for storms is going to be northeast of Kansas City, but that boundary still drapes across our area. So we're still going to see a tail end of it. Maybe a couple showers, especially as it moves in and then temperatures drop as we head into the weekend. Looking really great. Sunny skies, temperatures in the mid to upper 70s through the weekend. We do warm up pretty quickly into the low 80s Monday, Tuesday and some rain chances along the cold front boundary just ahead of Halloween. Let's look at your forecast, but coming up when KOAM morning news switches on over to Fox 14. Hear how soccer fans who suffer from hearing loss have an opportunity to hear the game they love for the first time. And here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Joseph Hill of Carthage pleads guilty for his role in a fatal DWI crash that happened more than two years ago. Joplin police say he was driving under the influence when he overturned near Grand Falls in Joplin. The Joplin Police Department arrested Hill after determining he was intoxicated while driving. As part of the plea deal, the second and third charges were dismissed. Hill sentencing is scheduled for January. The Miners Hall Museum in Franklin, Kansas is seeking help from a federal program that will allow the museum to improve its preservation efforts. 
the Collection Assessment for Preservation is a federal assessment program designed to work with and evaluate museums' preservation efforts. The McDonald County, Missouri School District rolled into National School Bus Safety Week with a unique and hands-on training experience exercise. The new program, Bus Helpers, empowers selected students to assist bus drivers in the case of an emergency. Now, these students received training in a combination of areas and bus operations. The training is part of the district's efforts to create a safer environment. And that's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Now taking a look at the seven day forecast temperatures today reaching upper 70s to low 80s across the region. The further south you go, the warmer it's going to be in the low 80s, but it's going to be sunny all day long. Winds start to pick up late tonight around 10 p.m. gusting up to 25 to possibly even 30 miles per hour, but they pick up even more in the morning gusts up to 35 to 40 miles per hour and above 40 miles per hour late Thursday evening right ahead of a cold front that is going to drop those temperatures and bring maybe a few showers. Perfect, just in time for Halloween too. Oh, yeah. We'll get those fall temperatures that I'm, we've been wanting and I, needing. I have been needing yes. the cooler <laughs> temperatures. I love in yes. the upper 60s, you know, low 70s. It's perfect. Absolutely. Well, coming up today at noon, we're making five star pumpkin bread in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. But your morning news continues on KOEM with CBS Mornings. Or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14 where your only local morning news continues. This morning, representatives from the Pittsburgh High School Culinary Dragons join us in the studio with an invitation to this year's Trunk or Treat Bash happening this weekend. Plus, Will Morris also joins us in the studio for another Wildcat Wednesday. That'll wrap it up for now. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And of course, we'll see you today at noon.